Welcome back to Success with Stephen. My name is Stephen Smith. And today we're going to be talking about increasing your Capital One credit line 3x within 60 days. So the way that this video came about, I was speaking with someone during a one-on-one -on -one coaching and they were talking about how they had a Capital One credit card and they actually have a 750 credit score at this time, but their Capital One credit card has not changed. They don't get limit increases or if they do get them, they've gotten like $100 and that's it. So I had the same issue with Capital One a couple years back and I actually learned what was causing my Capital One credit card to actually keep a low limit. So I think that a lot of us have started with Capital One as we've been trying to rebuild our credit. And because we weren't able to get the limit increases that we desired or as our credit actually went up, we weren't seeing our limit match, you know, our progress. We start to think that Capital One was a, a you know, not a good financial institution when in fact it's actually pretty good. Um, so I had to explain to this person exactly what was wrong. And it was a huge moment. I think once they realized what the issue was, fast forward, I received an email from them the day before yesterday, and they were able to get a $30,000 limit for a Venture X credit card. I thought that was amazing. So I wanted to come here today, make this video, and I wanted to share this with you guys so you can learn how to 3X your Capital One credit card within 60 days. So I wanna just talk about Capital One for a brief moment. Whether you're trying to rebuild your credit or your credit is excellent at this time, Capital One is a great financial institution to have on your credit profile. They are actually the, if not the largest, they are one of the largest subprime lenders that are available. So if you're trying to start off with credit for the first time or you're rebuilding, this is one of the major institutions that will be very, very um, loose with giving you credit cards. Now, because they're very loose with giving you that credit card, I, you know, I think this is where we get this misconception that Capital One may not be a good financial institution as we start to build our credit and go from having, you know, bad to fair to excellent. And I'm going to explain to you why that is. So some of you may have heard of this and some of you may not have heard of this, but Capital One has a system called the bucket system with the Capital One bucket system in place. It will prevent you from getting credit line increases based on the type of credit card that you're using with Capital One. And I'm going to give an example for you on their website in a, in a moment. So you can have perfect payment history, a great credit score and a relationship with Capital One for many years. And you'll get denied for a credit line increase and they'll give you um, or, you know, if you're not denied, they'll give you like a hundred dollar increase every year. Now, what exactly is the bucketing system? So Capital One groups their clients into categories based on their credit score at the time of your application. So the thing is, if you applied for Capital One at the time that you were rebuilding your credit and you had a 580 credit score, let's say a year later, you've worked on your credit, you have a 750 credit score. Capital One is still going to put you in the original bucket that you were when you first started. So when you first started with Capital One, if you were a um, a bad to fair or in the process of rebuilding credit card client, they're going to keep you within that same category and they're not going to know that you actually improved your credit score. So these buckets are a representation of different levels of risk. OK, any Capital One credit card that you receive will fall into one of these predefined buckets. So you may fall under the bad bucket list, fair bucket list, good bucket list or excellent bucket list. And let's go on to Capital One's website so I can give you an example of this. All right. So we're on the Capital One website right now. As you can see, we have the exact same Capital One Quicksilver card here. We have a Secure Quicksilver, where you have to provide a deposit in order to get this card. We have the Quicksilver Rewards 1, where you don't have to provide a deposit, which is for people with fair credit. We have people with good credit, the Quicksilver, and then we have the uh, Quicksilver for people with excellent credit. Now, doesn't it seem weird that for the same exact credit card, we have four different products? Strange, right? Notice when you look at the rewards, 
there are no rewards for the secure, which is, it says fair, but it's kind of the bad category. It's no rewards. I'm sorry, it's no uh, new member offers. You have no offers for the fi- for the fair, but you have some offers for the good, which is you'll earn the usual rewards, um, but you'll have a 0% APR. And then you'll earn $200 cash bonus once you spend 500 on a, on purchases combined w- within three months. So if you go ahead and you look at the different credit levels that you qualify for, as you notice, 0% APR, uh, possibly lower APR here, you can tell what the differences are. Uh, no annual fee for the secured one for the for the that's like the bad version for the fair version. You have an annual fee of thirty nine dollars for the good and excellent. No annual fee. So as you can see here, they separate each one of these based off of where you fall. And even though it looks like the same credit card product, you may not know that you're in a bucket where you're going to be capped based on your risk level. All right. So let's discuss more about what happens when you're bucketed by Capital One. So once approved for a Capital One card, um, that particular card will be placed in a bucket and the maximum credit limit is set for life on that card. So if you start with a Capital One Quicksilver and you start in the bad or fair category, the bad one, you may never see a limit higher than 3000 For the fair credit one, you may not see a limit higher than maybe, you know, 5000 for the excellent one, you may be capped out at 10,000 and maybe 30,000. Um, for the good one, maybe 10. For the excellent, you know, 30,000, maybe beyond. Maybe they'll offer you to upgrade to a Venture X or a different product, right? Um, you are pretty much locked into your bucket from the moment you get that card. And this is still in part based on your credit. So, for example, if you were applying for a Capital One using the pre approval screen, um, your credit options may have been from the excellent category, which will ultimately result in you having a higher limit. If you were in the good category or fair category, that will also determine where your limit will stop at. And that will ultimately result in credit line increases being higher in the future. Now, on the opposite spectrum, if you start out with Capital One and your credit is fair or you're rebuilding, you'll be subject to lower limits and capped at smaller credit lines or denied even if your credit improves in the future, even if you get an 800 credit score. So let's take a look at some more examples. So as you can see back on the Capital One website, there's credit levels, excellent, good, fair, and rebuilding. So if we go to excellent, you're of course gonna see the Venture X, the Venture, the the, the regular Venture card, the Venture One. These are for excellent um, credit card uh, clients or clients with excellent credit. You're going to see the Quicksilver excellent version. You'll see the Saver Rewards excellent version. And then you'll see the, the Walmart Rewards MasterCard and then so on and so forth. And based off of what you get pre-qualified for, if it falls into one of these excellent categories, you can almost be assured that you're going to have a high limit when you start this account. Now you can go to the good category, same thing. There's a Venture One card for just good credit. So you'll kind of have an idea of what they might start you off for a credit line. Maybe it'll be 5,000, somewhere in that range. Uh, you have the good version of the Quicksilver, the good version of the Saver One, and then so on and so forth. There's even a good version of the Walmart Rewards MasterCard with Capital One. As you can see, when you get to the fair, you don't see the ventures even on here anymore. Um, you see the Platinum MasterCard. You, you see the Quicksilver One card. You see the Saver One card. Your options start to actually change very much. And if you get to rebuilding, you really only have the Platinum Secured or they'll offer you the Quicksilver, the secured version of that one as well. So... Based off of what you get pre-qualified for, you can already kind of know what your limit's going to be. If you're rebuilding, it's probably 500. If you're fair, it's probably 1,000 to 1,500 dollars, maybe. If you're good, it may be anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000. If you're excellent, um, I've you know I've seen where it seems to be like 30,000 dollars starting for some of the some of the car types like the Venture X with excellent credit. All right, so I'm sure some of you are wondering why does Capital One use this system. 
Um, basically, it's it's Comet. And I just broke down exactly what that is. It's Capital One's Multi-Asset Execution Trust. Uh, some people call it a MAT, M-A-T. It's a type of ABS. If you don't know what an ABS is, it is a security. It's a type of financial investment that's collateralized by an underlying pool of assets, usually one that generates a cash flow from debt, such as loans, leases, credit card, balances, or receivables. So here's the thing. Banks get paid with interchange fees. The more that you use a card, the more money that uh, that that institution makes. They also take these cards based off of the cash flow from debt on your credit cards and they put it into these securities that people make money off of. But they have to put them in different tier levels based on risk. So when you're more of a risk to default, you have lower credit limits. That's basically it. So to put it simply, our credit cards are being used to make money and pay out investors. That's really as simple as it's going to be. So because there's different levels to this, the excellent ones, they give them higher limits. They make more money off of people with excellent credit when they use their credit card products. In turn, they give them more credit so they can spend more money and they're known to pay back on time. So they're unlikely to default. They make more money off of people with excellent credit. They will give them more money to spend because of that fact. That's 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 pretty much it. And now that you know this, you probably have an understanding of why this is happening to you and why your limit is being capped by Capital One. So, again, if you're still asking, what does this have to do with credit limit increases? So, again, the different bucket tiers being bundled as assets. OK, they determine how risky you are, i.e., how much limit you'll be approved for. And this system does not take into account how much your credit has improved over time. And thus your credit limit is capped. Even when you, you can have $30,000 like limits with a different bank, you're still going to have an $800 limit with Capital One. And, you know, unfortunately, this is the reason why. But there is a way for us to overcome that. Now, how would you know which bucket that you're currently in? You would check your initial limit when you first got your capital one credit card it's a huge indication of what bucket that you're in if your limit was anywhere between 500 to 1000 dollars, you're more than likely in a low level bucket so for example the average limit of a venture x credit card is around 30,000. so the average person who gets a venture x average is thirty thousand dollars Another thing to note is most high end customers, the one with excellent credits, they're able to get credit lines of up to a credit line increases of up to ten thousand dollars using manual increases, not automatic ones. They can also receive credit line increases upon card activation. So even when they initially get the card, they, they can submit a request to do a credit line increase and still get that increase fairly quickly now if you want to know how to change the bucket that you're in this is the answer you have to sign up for a completely new capital one card so simply doing a product change into a new card won't necessarily remove your cap um, any card that you change into will have the same type of limiting issues as well um, here's another great tip before you sign up for capital one you can get pre-approved first check the limit that you can um, you know, potentially get pre-approved for or the credit l limit increase. If it's low, I would turn it down and check back again at a later time or when your credit limit has improved. Another tip is your credit limit is based on what your other credit cards are currently at. So if you have a credit card with let's say like Navy Federal, you could potentially, maybe if you're at 2000, Increase that card to 10,000. Navy Federal is known to do $8,000 limit increases, usually within the first 90 days, and then after that, six months. So, if you get a credit line increase for let's say 8,000 on one credit card to where that, that credit limit is 10,000, it'll greatly improve the chances that when you apply for another card, they will try to match whatever your other limit is that, that they see that other banks gave you. So that's just one other tip that you could do. How are you going to get approved for a higher limit with Capital One? So here's the first step. You need to have good to excellent credit. That means you need to have a 680 plus. No collections, no charge offs. I would recommend less than two hard inquiries. That's not a, you know, a major factor, but I would recommend it. 
your utilization must be low, at least below 5%. It doesn't have to be, but we're just saying if we want to make sure we are giving the greatest opportunity for the results that we want, 5% would be good. I would have a good credit mix, at least maybe seven to 10 positive accounts that are reporting. And again, if you can do credit line increases on your other accounts, I recommend doing that as well. So you want to add number two, you want to ask for a credit line increase on all the other credit cards. Um, you want to look at the limit that um, that other banks are approving you for. And again, that is going to be something that will determine what limits that they should offer you. So you want to be cognizant of everything else on your credit profile that will help you. And this doesn't just apply to Capital One. Th this applies to all credit card um, issuers. So someone who actually worked at FICO did um, did state that a lot of times when you get these limit increases, it's based off of what you have with other institutions. So again, every time you swipe your card and banks make money from interchange fees, um, they are likely to want to give you more credit line. So the more you use your card, the better it's going to be. So you don't you don't you don't have to use like um, a majority of your limit. I've seen I've worked at three different banks. I've seen where some people have used that strategy where you try to almost, you know, close to maxing out your card and then paying it off. Um, you don't necessarily have to, to uh, do that. I mean, I've seen p people try that same thing. I'm not saying that it doesn't work. I think what would be more effective and not look as risky is if you just do multiple transactions. Again, banks make money from the interchange fee. Every time you use it, the merchant is paying for that. Uh, we don't know that. Well, I know that because I I pay the fees from my businesses. But a lot of people who are, you know, just the customers don't know that. They don't know about the interchange fees. So you make them money when you make transactions. They They love that. Make transactions very often if you have a card where you're looking to get a credit limit increase. And then, of course, pay it down to 5%. So it shows that you're making a lot of transactions, but you're also responsible at the end of your closing cycle date and you're only keeping 5% or less of your total credit limit. So um, number four, you want to make sure that you apply for, um, for uh, Capital One for a Capital One card that is in the excellent or the good bucket, okay? So if you try to get pre-approved and you're not pre-approved for a card in the excellent or the good bucket, I would just wait. Doesn't make sense. You, you might as well wait because you already know if you fall into one of those other tiers, you're going to be capped. So it, it wouldn't do you any good. You would want to just wait. Um. Always use the pre-approval option. It's always recommended because it doesn't impact your, your score and it gives you the answer to your question. So even if you have good credit, but let's say they only offer you something or you have excellent credit and let's say that they offer you so something in the good to fair option. Take a look at your other credit cards. Look if your limit is very low. Try to do a credit line increase with all your institutions. Um, I mean, if you've been paying on time, if you have a good relationship and you haven't asked for one, more than likely you'll get approved. Worst case, do a manual review with someone at the bank, call them and ask them for that limit increase. All right, here's a credit line increase uh, data point that can help you with not only Capital One, but most institutions. So your employment status, always choose employed. If you select self-employment, it can limit the amount of credit line that you will be approved for. Uh, since Capital One may consider this type of income to be unstable. Um, you want to always say, because when you do a credit line increase with Capital One, they're going to ask you, um, how much will you spend on your on your credit card? Use 30%. Reason being 30% is that recommended amount that you have. And um, you want to always do 30% of the available credit because it shows that you're using a good amount of that of that card. But at the same time, you're not overly using it. So 30% of a $10,000 card, if you're asking for that limit, would be $3,000. So this amount should trigger an auto credit line increase without looking risky. The maximum desired line, I always go 20% higher than the actual line that I'm looking for. So worst case, Capital One will simply counter offer 
with a limit that I'm actually aiming for. All right. So recommend it that you do it that way. Uh, you know, if you want a credit line of 10,000, ask for 12,000 and um, then they may come back and counter you with 10,000, which is actually what you were aiming for. And when you are requesting a credit line increase, you want to choose the uh, the option. I expect higher expenses over the next few months. So that's letting them know that you expect to spend a little more, but you're not expecting to spend more than 30 percent. It's a very, very good option. And again, when you're submitting a credit line increase, you're going to see these exact options for Capital One. Select the options and of course, input them to fit whatever your criteria is. But these are you should do these options as such, according to your criteria based off of what's going on with you and your life. So to summarize everything, if you are currently a Capital One credit card holder and you have a, a, a Capital One Quicksilver or the Platinum card and you're capped out at a limit and you cannot get an increase, first thing you want to do Go to Capital One's website, get pre-approved. If they pre-approve you for, let's say, an excellent card, like an excellent Quicksilver or the Venture One or the Venture X, take that credit card option. You're likely to get a high limit. That is going to be your first credit limit increase. When you initially get the card, you can submit another credit line increase. I recommend trying that when you first get it. I even recommend trying to get $10,000 for that first increase. So if you're approved for, uh, let's say, wh whichever one that you choose, if it's, if it's the Quicksilver Excellent, you're approved for $10,000, try to uh, request an increase of $10,000 so you can, can get $20,000. 31 days after that, request another credit line increase, another $10,000, using the criteria that we have here. If you are denied for that, wait 31 days and try again every 31 days for the credit line increase, okay? If you do that, that would be your credit line increase three times, right? And that would be three times within a 60-day time frame. So you could potentially go from, you know, 5,000 um, to maybe even going to 25 or 30,000, depending on the type of product. Uh, you know, if it's an excellent product, you may easily be able to go to 30,000 and 3x your credit limit. If you are already a Capital One member currently at this time and you already have a, let's say, an excellent category credit card, when you submit your credit line increase, make sure that you submit a credit line increase for all of your other cards So and wait for them to report. They have to report the, the new credit line increase. Then use this same criteria, right? If you have maybe gotten, um, if you have gotten an, uh, a new job, if you're making more money, if you have a side job, you can actually see on Capital One that you can use that income to add to your current net income. So you can add that onto there and you can use that to raise how much you're making. That's another thing that, that you can also implement. Follow this same thing. You should receive a credit line increase, right? And you can request it again in 31 days. You can 2X your credit limit, okay? Um, hopefully following the, this criteria and learning about this system has actually helped you and you will see an increase in your credit limit with Capital One. Again, this information isn't just limited to Capital One. You can also apply this information to any financial institution. This will apply all across the board. Um, you know, if you have a card with Capital One, put your credit limit in the comments. Let me know if this video did help you increase your your credit limit with Capital One, or if you just learned more about how credit limits work and things that institutions look for, let me know if any of these things actually helped you to get a credit line increase. Uh, these things have helped me. Again, the person I had my one-on-one -on -one with, they got the Venture X at $30,000. I thought that was phenomenal. And I just wanted to make sure that I shared this information so other people would also learn maybe why they were being limited and, you know, can really take advantage of Capital One as a financial institution. So again, uh, thank you guys for your time. Thank you for watching this video. You guys have a wonderful day.